Well, good morning. I want to welcome you in the name of the Lord, and I want to encourage you. God is good. God is wonderful. He loves you. He has a plan. Even though the world seems kind of scary right now, God's not. God's got it all under control. I want to pray for you this morning, then we're going to start. Um, Father, we just thank you for the opportunity, the privilege, and the honor we have, Lord, of coming before you, of lifting up your name, Lord, of glorifying you, Lord, of looking into your word, Father, of being encouraged, Lord. Thank you for the grace of God in our hearts, in our lives, in our homes, in our families, in our churches, Lord, Lord that you've bestowed upon us, Father, that enables us to rise above and to live a life that we could not otherwise live, Lord. A victorious life of overcoming, Lord, and of loving you, Father, in the name of Jesus. So I pray for my brothers and sisters, Lord, that you would encourage them today, Lord. You'd lift them up in the name of Jesus. You would fire them up in you, Lord. And, Lord, that our, we, our eyes would not be downcast, Lord, but they would look up for our redemption draws nigh. In the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Well, this morning I titled my message, How Much Longer? Sometimes we wonder... How much longer is this going to go on, God? How much longer are you going to allow this to happen? Well, none of us know, but in the meantime, you and I, brothers and sisters, have to be encouraged by the Lord and have to know that God is, has everything in control and God has your life in control and he loves you. Amen. If you're struggling this morning, whether it's financially, whether it's spiritually, whether you're struggling at your job, whether you're struggling in relationships, I want to encourage you, the Lord loves you, and he sees that. And he, he wants to, um, I want to say, take every circumstance you're going through and bring you closer to him. So whatever you're going through, know that God, his desire is that you're closer to him and that you're walking with him. And maybe there's some immediate thing that you're going through that you just um, have been struggling with and you're, you're dealing with in your life right now. There's some immediate thing that you think, well, I've been living in a way that I haven't been pleasing the Lord, or I've been sinning, or I've been living in a way that grieves the Holy Spirit of God, but I'm desperate right now. That's a good place to be because when you're desperate, you cry out to the Lord. And the word says in Proverbs that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So those things sometimes bring a fear or a dread upon our heart and our life, but sometimes those things are um, used by the Lord to draw us close to Him. Amen. So, so we, we, we make choices all the time, and I pray that God helps you to make good choices. So you say, well, yeah, well, that doesn't help me right now. What helps me right now? I want to say prayer will help you right now. And I want to pray for you right now that God would help you and God would increase um, his power in your heart and your life and his overcoming power to overcome things. But right now, let's just take a moment and let's just pray to the Lord. Let's break that thing off. Let's start off like a clean slate like that chalkboard's been washed clean and that you are on the right pathway with the Lord. Amen. So, Father, we just take authority over every hindrance, Lord, every work, Father, that has been designed and perpetrated, Lord, to destroy, Lord, and to bring about bondage and oppressions. In the name of Jesus, take that off. Break it in the name of Jesus. And set us free, Father, so we can walk with you, Lord, and we can be lifted up with you in the precious holy name of Jesus. Well, I want to read a couple of things. I'm going, to be, I'm going to be reading a lot of scripture verses this morning. And I'm going to try to not expound too much because um, I have a lot here and I want to get through this this morning. I want to encourage you this morning. Um, this is called Dress Rehearsal for the New World Order by John Hagee. He said, we are racing toward the end of the world as we know it. Our world is being reconstructed, restructured, leaving God out of the picture. The corona coronavirus changed America forever. If you do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you will see another pandemic that will be far worse. Who would think we would be banned from attending church, a freedom outlined by the First Amendment, as our individual rights were systematically stripped away during an enforced quarantine? One third of the world's or the prison population was released, but business owners were incarcerated for working. Our economy sunk to the worst since the Great Depression as we watched power-hungry dictators trample our freedoms in an extended crisis intended to crush the hopes of people. Make no mistake, the Great Tribulation is coming and it will be worse. COVID-19 is dress rehearsal for what is to come. I believe that too. But you know what? Once again, when gloom and despair and dread surround us on all sides, we are not to look at those things. And while I was on my vacation last week, the Lord said something to me over and over again. He said, don't look to the world. Don't look to men in the world. Look to me. 
God wants us to keep our eyes focused on Jesus. He wants us to lift up our eyes from where our redemption comes, which is from heaven. Amen. David said, I looked at the hills from, from where my help comes from. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. And God will give you strength. Amen. In the name of Jesus, he'll give you strength and he'll lift you up and encourage you in the name of the Lord. Amen. So when things are looking bleak, um, we can make a choice. We can sink to the depression and the despair around us, or we can be an overcomer and allow God to lift us out of that miry clay and to rejoice in him, knowing my hope is in God. Amen. Sometimes the reason we sink to that low is because our hopes in the world, our hopes in our finances, our hopes in our uh, the things that surround us, our hope is in our home, our hope is in our retirement. Many people lost their retirement or have lost their retirement and they had to find a new hope, which was God, because it's nice to be comfortable, but God is our focus and our hope. Amen. I want to read something. How much longer? Think about it. How much longer is this going to go on? I don't know. And there have been so many predictions and so many people trying to predict when the Lord was going to return. Um, I remember in 1972 and 1978, both years were great predictions of the Lord's return because of Israel being formed as a nation in 1948. And so in 1982 and 2000, remember 2000 um, and Y2K and, this, and, the, and the crash of all our computers and all that was predicted that didn't happen. The word says that nobody knows except for the Father in heaven. So what are we to, be, do, what are we to do? We're to make ourselves ready, amen. Revelation 1, 7 says, Behold, he is coming with clouds, and every eye will see him, and even those who pierced him. And all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him. Even so, amen. There are multiple scripture verses and, um, um, and um, references that we have that speak both of the rapture and the second coming of Christ, our Lord and Savior. The first event is to catch away the bride. And the second way, second verse, the, well, the rapture or harpazo, people say, well, rapture is not in the scripture. But the, the word harpazo is in there, a Greek word meaning to catch away or to lift up or to snatch away or to take. And the word says that at some point the Lord is going to snatch away his bride or take his bride or grab his bride and lift her up off this earth. And the word, and I'm going to read a couple of scripture verses about that. But I want to, I want to encourage you. These are, the, these are the things that we look forward to. Um, and then we'll remain in heaven with our Lord and Savior until the great tribulation is over. Then we'll return to earth to rule and reign with, his, with the Lord for his, um, for his second coming. He will dis descend from heaven to rule on the earth for a thousand years or a millennium. Satan will be bound and cast into a bottomless pit for, an in for the entire time. He will be released to tempt those who were born and raised on earth during the millennium. Then he will be bound and cast into the lake of fire for all eternity. Amen. Then we will live with the Lord for eternity. Amen. No more, no more contention, strife, division, no more um, um, political stress or no more two parties fighting against. There will be none of that, no division. It will be perfect harmony. Amen. This is both, this is both exciting and scary. Um, it's a scary time in the, in the history of the world. For a believer in God and servant of Jesus Christ, it should be a longing of our hearts. Our focus should be on the blessing to the believer, not the fear of the world events or the surrounding chaos. We should rise above and overcome the adversity, the fear, the dread, and the pledge our lives to the Father above. He will give us strength to go through anything that he brings our way. Amen. And to overcome. And throughout the millennium, throughout the, the, the time of earth as we know it, people have been persecuted. People have struggled all over the earth. People have died for Jesus. People have given their life for the Lord. People have lost every earthly possession they've ever had for Jesus. And they overcame. Um, and God will give us the strength to do whatever we have to do to keep our eyes fixed on him. Well, this morning I'm going to talk about, I'm just going to give you a list of the fundamental faith or declarations of faith of the Foursquare Church. And then I'm going to focus just on one of them this morning. And then I'm going to talk maybe over the next several weeks, I'm going to um, pick those um, fundamentals that are, I'm not going to go through all 22 of them, but I'm going to pick those and maybe clump some of them together and work some of them together and encourage you with those things. These are fundamentals of our faith, fundamentals that we believe in as Pentecostal believers, um, and they're biblical foundations that we have to hang on to. 
Um, and I'm going to read through them and just maybe highlight just a couple of them really quickly. And then there's one I'm going to settle on. So um, the first one is the Holy Scriptures. We believe the Holy Bible is the word of, word of the living God. It's immutable, steadfast, unchangeable, um, as is the author, Lord, our Lord Jehovah. It was written by the men of old that were moved upon and inspired by the Holy Spirit. Um, 2 Timothy verse three, or chapter 3, verse 16 and 17 says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Amen. God wants to equip you this morning for every good work. And he does that what? Through the word of God. What do we understand about God? We understand it through the word of God. What do we know about God? We know it by the word of God. What do we know and how do we know what God is pleased with, what God is displeased, or how God wants us to live? By the word of God. Amen. Um, there are other people that have had incredible experiences with the Lord, and we certainly are encouraged by those experiences, but we don't live by those experiences. We live by the word of God. We can encourage others, and we can speak of those experiences and those um, those wonderful re revelations or visions that God's given to other people, but we have to go by the, everything has to line up with this word. Can I hear an amen? Amen. Okay, so that's the first thing, the, the living word of God, the word of God, the inspired scripture. The second thing is the eternal Godhead, and we believe there are three parts to the eternal God, or three persons of the, the eternal Godhead, which is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Um, the third one is the, I'm going to run through these really quickly, and then I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to settle on one. But the third one is the fall of man. The fourth is the plan of redemption. The fifth is salvation through grace. The sixth is repentance and acceptance. The seventh is the new birth. The eighth is daily Christian life. The ninth is water baptism and the Lord's Supper. Um, the tenth is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Um, the eleventh is the Spirit-filled life. The twelfth is the gifts and the fruit of the Spirit. The thirteenth is moderation. 14th is divine healing. The 15th is the second coming of Christ. We're going to focus on that one today. Um, the third or the 16th is church relationship. So the 16th is church relationship. The 17th is civil government. The 18th is judgment. The 19th is heaven. 20th is hell. 21st is evangelism. And 22nd is tithe and offering. So I want to talk to you this morning about the second coming of Christ. And there's so much to talk about that I have to pare it way down. And so I want to encourage you this morning. There, there are a couple of events that are going to happen that we look forward to. And um, so I was trying to think of how do I present this because I'm so overwhelmed with the information. I'm so overwhelmed with, with the world events. I'm so overwhelmed with all of these things that are happening all around us. And so I thought, how do I pare this down in a way that makes sense to me? And the, the way I could pare it down was that we could focus on two major events um, through this next few weeks, and, um, and everything's gonna kind of circle around that um, um, when pertaining to these two events. Any of the things that I talk about we're gonna, are gonna kind of be events that swirl around these two things, and that one is the rapture of the church, and the second one is the second coming of Christ. And what are the events that happen, and what are the things, the circumstances and the situations that surround those events that, and also that are indicators of, or the signs of the times that tell us when these are going to happen. So I'm going to read a couple of scripture verses, and I want to encourage you to look up and be ready. The Lord says we're to be ready. Even back 2,000 years ago, the Lord said to be ready. Be ready, because when, if we're ready in our heart, um, if the second coming hasn't happened or the rapture hasn't happened up to this point, they were to be ready. Making yourself ready prepares you for not only the coming of the Lord, but it prepares you for what the Lord would have you to do. So that your heart, your heart and your life are right before the Lord. So for every occasion, every situation, every opportunity you have, you're ready. Amen. That you are equipped to do what the Lord wants you to do. Amen. So 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 to 18 says, But I don't want you to be ignorant, brethren. It's important. It was important to Timothy. Um, important to Paul, important to forefathers that, that were before us, important to the ancestors of the church, um, that we are not ignorant. Concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow, uh, sorrow as those who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. Who are those who sleep in Jesus? 
the ones that sleep in Jesus sleep is is another word that, that is um, that's used for death. So those who have died and gone on to be with the Lord it says that those that are with the Lord now, if they've died in Jesus, they're with the Lord. He said, and that God will bring those who sleep in Jesus with Him. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord that. We who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. That means we're not going to go before those who sleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. What does that mean? They're not with the Lord? That doesn't make sense. No, the bodies of those, the decomposed bodies, the elements that are their DNA, um, are going to come are going to come together and they're going to come up as a glorified body and it says that they're going to rise first then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the lord in the air and thus we shall always be with the lord therefore comfort one another with these words so this is the first event which which the church calls the rapture and what does that mean is that different than the second coming yes the second coming is a different event from the rapture the rapture is an event the Lord has prepared for those who love him, that follow him, that believe in him, that have lived for him, that have devoted their lives to him. It's an event that God is going to bring to encourage those and lift those people out of the tragedy that's going to come upon the world. What an exciting time for us. Amen. I've, I've, I've looked for it all my life. I'm 60 years old. And I've believed in these events since I was a kid because I was told about them since I was a kid. And there are things that happen around now that are going to precipitate the coming of the Lord. I'm going to read something out of Titus and then something out of Matthew and then something out of Hebrews and something out of Thessalonians. I'm going to read right through them. Then I'm going to encourage you. Okay. Titus chapter 2, verse 11, 15. Titus chapter 2, verse 11 to 15 says, for the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying God ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present age, looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people, zealous for good works, Speak these things, exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no one despise you. I want to say, God's created you to be a special people for Him. He's called you to be a special. He's called you out to be special. He's called you out um, as a unique people that is like no other people on the face of the earth, and that is His children, those who believe Him, those who follow Him, those who love Him, those that are with Him. They are those that he is going to lift out of this world in the rapture. Amen. So we're supposed to speak these things. We're supposed to exhort with them. We're supposed to rebuke with all authority and let no one despise you. That's what um, is spoken of in Titus. Matthew 24, 36 to 44 says, But of that day and hour no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark. I want to say that again. They were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage. They were partying. They were living a life carefree, thinking that there was nothing but the goodness of the earth and fun and partying and living for that, that thing in their life and living for those events. It says, until the day of Noah entered the ark and did not know that until the flood came and took them all away. So also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Two men shall be in the field, one will be taken, the other left. Two women will be grinded at the mill, one will be taken, the other will be left. Watch therefore, for you do not know the hour in which the Lord is coming. But know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief had come, he would, not, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore you also be ready. There it is again. He says, be ready for the Son of Man is coming in an hour that you do not expect. Many people go, well, where's the coming of the Lord? I've heard about that for years. It hasn't happened. People have predicted that over and over and over, and it hasn't happened. Well, why would people predict something that God says not even anyone on earth knows, not even the angels of heaven, only the Father himself? Why would people presume to predict something they're not supposed to even know? 
Hmm. Hebrews 9.28 says, So Christ was offered once to bear the sins of many. To those who eagerly wait for him, he will appear a second time apart from sin for salvation. Amen. There are over 100 scripture verses that make reference to the second coming of the Lord. The Lord is going to return. And finally, I have one more scripture verse I want to read to you, and then I want to encourage you with a few things. Amen. 2, Timothy, or 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 1 to 10. It's a big chunk of scripture, but I think it's very important to read it. It's called the great apostasy. Now, brethren, concerning, that's 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1 to 10. It says, now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him, we ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or trouble, either by spirit or by word or by letter, as, this, as if from us, as though the day of Christ had come. Let no one deceive you by any means, for the, that day will not come unless the falling away comes first. And the man of perdition or sin is revealed, the son of perdition, who oppresses and exalts himself, or opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Do not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things, and now you know what is restraining, that he may be revealed in his own time. For the mystery of the lawless, lawlessness is already at work, only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way, and when the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming, the coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteousness, deception among those who perish, because they did not receive a love of the truth that they might be saved. You see this over and over and over. There's this lawlessness that is happening in our society, in our country that has never been seen before like it is now. There's always been lawlessness, but there's lawlessness all over the place that is all over the world. And the Bible says there's an unrighteous deception among those who perish. There are those that believe the truth and the truth they believe is a lie. And it says, they did not because they did not receive a love of the truth. What is truth? Jesus Christ says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. He became the word. The word became flesh and dwelled among us. The word of God is the truth. Jesus Christ is the truth. I mean, it says that they did not love the truth and would not receive a love of the truth that they might be saved. Um, they deliberately denied the truth, walked away from the truth, and blaspheme against the truth. I mean, the word says that they were given over to a strong delusion that they would believe the lie. And it's a scary thing this morning, and my prayer always is that God, you would keep me from deception. I pray that over my church. I pray that over my children. I pray that over myself. God, help me to remain humble, Lord, and to walk in that humility, God, because that humility is given grace by God. God gives great grace to the humble, but he says he resists the proud. I don't want to be proud. Amen. So I have to crucify my flesh every day and, and submit to the Lord and humble myself before the Lord. How do you humble yourself? Well, there's ways you humble yourself. Um, there's um, different ways you humble yourself. Um, one is confessing your sins and your trespasses against people, confessing them and acknowledging them and saying, I did wrong. Um, and um, to confess those things before them. Another is to serve. Some people that are prideful will not serve anybody. They want to be served. But the word says, if you want to be great in God's kingdom, you have to learn to be the servant of all. Amen. So those, there's things that we can do to humble ourselves. Acknowledgement and serving. And allow God to work in our hearts and our lives. Amen. And to know and to pray. I want to say, if you pray to the Holy Spirit, that he would keep you from being deceived. He's going to honor that prayer. He's going to honor that prayer. He's going to lift you up and he's going to keep you from being deceived. Amen. Amen. So we can all be deceived. If it weren't for the grace of God, we could all be deceived. We could all walk in unrighteousness and we could walk in ungodly paths. But because of the grace of God, he's given us strength to rise above. So I want to just um, review a little bit and then encourage you this morning. And then I'm going to talk about these things more of these things next week. But there are two events that will unfold and happen in time. The rapture of the church and the second coming of Christ. And I've been talking about them. Many events will unfold scripturally and many things have already taken place 
But these are the true primary events that we as believers look for. All other surrounding events are times, seasons, events, signs, and wonders, and, th and things that lead to these two events. Amen. The first event will be incredibly encouraging to the believers of Christ that love Jesus with all their heart. Because in Revelation, it says to one of the churches, which is the, the Philadelphia church, or the church of love, brotherly love, it says that because you've loved me, and because you've persevered, and you've obeyed my commandments, he said, I'm going to keep you from the hour of trial that's going to fall upon the whole earth. I'm going to keep you. I'm going to, I'm going to snatch you up. I'm going to take you. You're not going to have to go through the worst of this. We may have to go through some persecution. We may have to go through some difficulties. We have Our, our country has been shaken over the last year because of the things that have happened. And there are, there are certain things that we are not looking forward to that may happen to us. Are you ready for that? Some of our freedoms may be stripped. Some of the things that we have taken for granted in our life may be taken from us. But whatever happens, keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. Amen. That's what the Lord kept telling me over and over. Keep your eyes fixed on me. Amen. So those two primary events you and I look for, and everything else surrounds those things. Everything else is a sign or, um, or a, an event or a season or things that are happening, or a wonder that's happening that, that brings about these two events. Believers in Jesus and servants of the Lord have anxiously awaited the, the return of Christ. We've re, we have, I've awaited all my life, but since he left and promised his disciples that he's going to come back in the same way that he left, a longing, of every, a longing of every true believer is to see the Redeemer in the sky. Amen. To be pulled out of this world to join their loved ones in, this, in the life after this one. As our world spiral, spirals downward, are we going to be abject, downcast, forlorn, or weary worn? Are we going to hang our heads with those, with those that have no hope? Are we to give in to despair around us and cave to the world systems and pressures? No way! Amen! We're to rise above and to overcome. Amen! We're to walk in the freedom of the Lord, for he whom the Lord has set free is free indeed. What are the signs of his coming? The rapture of his church. We're going to talk about those in the next couple weeks. I want to focus in on a couple of those things that bring us to this place of awareness so that we are prepared and ready. God wants you to be ready. Amen. So I want to say it's exciting. Amen. And you're like, oh, well, you don't have this or that going on in your life. Or you don't, um, maybe you're, you're older and you don't have the hopes and dreams of a young person or what. You know, I've, I've went through all of that. So I totally understand that when I was a kid, I didn't want the Lord to come because I wanted to experience some things in life and I wanted to, I wanted to live my life a little bit. Amen. And yes, I am older and I've lived my life. Um, and there are certain things that make me want to stay here. Um, my children, for one thing, are four beautiful children that I love make me want to stay on earth and make sure they have a solid foundation under them. My church, my family, my friends. Amen. Those are all things that keep us here and keep us encouraged. So um, it's not all about us and getting our desire to go to heaven. It's about us helping nurture those along the pathway and bringing them to a place where they stand on a sure foundation as well. And we can do that through, through encouraging them, equipping them, exhorting them, um, and even rebuking them. Amen. Well, I want to encourage you this morning. Um, God loves you. Don't be discouraged. I know many of you are discouraged. Some of you are financially struggling right now, maybe um, struggling relationships, as I prayed for at the beginning of this message. But I want to encourage you, the Lord loves you. He has a purpose and a plan for your heart and your life. And he wants to lift you up. And he wants to bring you to a place of trust in him, complete trust in him, where you know that the Lord is in complete control of your life. Don't give up today. Don't be discouraged today, but look to the Lord. Amen. I'll pray for you this morning. We're going we're gonna to close in prayer, and then I'm going to encourage you um, to look for and look in the Word of God for the things that He wants to encourage you with every day. If you're not in the Word of God every day, you're going to struggle, right? Because His words bring their spirit in their life, and they bring life. As you read the Word of God, you're breathing life. You're reading life. And I like to read out loud sometimes because... The word says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So read the word out loud. Amen. It's, it's a great practice. Amen. Father, we just thank you for the opportunity, the privilege, the honor we have, Lord, to love you, to serve you, and to be called your children. 
Not only be called your children, to be called your friends. We are your friends like Abraham, Lord. You desire to have a friendship with us and a relationship with us. So I want to encourage my brothers and my sisters. God wants to have a relationship with you. He wants to lift you up. He wants to love you. He wants to encourage you. Amen. And one of the one more one closing thought was as I read through the Old Testament, I've been reading through the Kings and I've been reading through some of the the horrible things that happened throughout Israel. Um, and there was a promise by God given to all of the kings and given to those men of old that loved him. And that was if they followed him and loved him and pursued him and obeyed his commandments, his hand would be upon them to guide them and direct them and to bless them. But if they turned from God to other gods, what could other gods be? Other gods could be in our, in our society. Other gods could be our job. They could be our spouse. They could be our house. They could be our property. They could be our television. They could be our name. They could be our, um, um, you, you fill in the slot. They could, be, they could be pharmaceutical drugs that you think you need to survive or to help you out of the pain you're in. They could be anything. And the Lord said, if you set another God before me, um, he told this to Israel and the kings, if you set other gods before me, that I will dismantle your kingdom and calamity will come upon you and he would turn his face from them. Sad story of many and most of the kings that lived during that time. Sad story for those that have gone on before us, that have turned away from God and have decided to live a life contrary to God's word and would not believe what God said. Let our faith be strong until our last breath. May the breath, may the thing that we say last is the praises to God. While we're going out and while, while God is um, taking us home, may the praises of the Lord be on our lips and that people would hear us praising God and lifting him up even while our life is, as we know it on this earth, is leaving us. That God would, that people would hear us praying him and praising him and lifting him up in the name of Jesus. I want to encourage you, God loves you. Keep your eyes focused on Jesus today and always. But if you haven't been reading the word of God or praying like you should, just start today. Start today and let God have you, have your heart, have your, um, have your, your passion, have your desires and dreams. Let God have those things because he'll bless you far more than you ever knew. Amen. God bless you.